Well, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whichever one, whichever time you're viewing this video. This is your instructor, and I've come to give you and to offer you help concerning your homework assignment, which is to outline the book of Jude. Now, the last time we communicated, I sent a text that probably confused you even more more I do apologize for that so hopefully this video will clear things up okay so I wanted to share with you on page 98 the conclusion that our author brings to us and it just sums everything up I pray we don't make this more difficult than it is and again if at any time you need help call me text me email me uh, I'll be glad to connect with you to make sure that you are completely, uh, that you completely understand what it is we're attempting to do, and that is to outline the book of Jude. But this is what the author said on page 98. He says, the expository method is in one sense the simplest way to preach. It is, when you think about it, it's the simplest way to preach. Why is that? He tells us because all the basic materials for the sermon are contained in the passage to be expounded. Everything that you need is right there in the book of Jude. You don't have to use any uh, study Bibles or anything to try to find something to pull it together. In our expository sermon, everything is coming right from the text, so you don't need to venture out anywhere else. And generally, the preacher has only to follow the order of the text. That's all we have to do. We're going to start at verse 1, and we're going to go all the way through verse 5 and just outline and pull out those things that stand out to you. Okay? So don't make it difficult. Just read it and write down those things that are important or that stand out to you. I wanted to use this example on page 89 not to show the content of what's in it, but I want to use this to show the format, the way your outline should look when you turn it in next week. Uh, if you want to in include a title, that's fine, uh, but I want to see your text. And if you have a subject or a theme, that you've uh, come up with, that's fine. But I'm looking for your outline. I'm looking to see the format of your outline. Your main divisions are always going to be numbered as here, one, two, and three. That's how we know that they're the main divisions. That's the main point you want to uh, bring home, the main thing you want to talk about. And then, uh, our example here shows the scripture reference for that. Your subdivisions are always going to be lettered. Your subdivisions are always going to be indented. Indented means it's not going to start right up under the one. Your subdivisions should be, uh, if you want to have it underneath where your main division starts, that's fine. But uh, I like to have mine, I like to tab over one more time. So again, for clarity, so that I can easily see where I want to be. But at any rate, make sure that your subdivisions, which are your letters, do not fall underneath your numbers. Make sure they are indented, okay? And so here, our author only has two subdivisions for each one. Again, this is just an example of the layout. You could have as many subdivisions that are necessary. Sometimes your your subdivision may even start in the next verse, pick up or continue in the next verse. That's fine. But just make sure that your subdivisions are lettered and that they are indented. Okay? So um, that's our assignment to outline the book of Jude and to show main divisions and subdivisions, okay? So let's take a few minutes, let's look at the book of Jude and let's go through a few verses and outline them together. Okay, I have my Bible here um, and Jude, Jude chapter one. And I have my 
word processing program over here and I'm getting ready to type. I'm going to make my font bigger so we can see. Okay, so um, I've got my text. June chapter one, we'll just call it that. Okay, so I need to read the text. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. So that's a lot. So I'm going to look at it piece by piece. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James. So Jude, uh, is the brother of Christ and brother of James. He's writing to them that are called. I'm sorry, he was writing to them that are sanctified. And they are sanctified um, by God the Father, and they are preserved in Jesus Christ, and they are called. So that's a good sermon there. You can look at each one of those areas, and you can minister on uh, your three subdivisions there. Okay, so we're going to continue on. Mercy, uh, our text says, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. So, uh, we can conclude or we can summarize, summarize that uh, James is, how about this? James is pronouncing a blessing on the believers. What type of blessing? Mercy. Um, peace. And love. And not only mercy, peace, and love, that it be multiplied. Uh, let's see. Okay. And let's go to the next verse. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Okay, so again, that's quite a bit. So let's break it into pieces. Beloved. When I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. Okay, so Jude, if you want to make a sentence or uh, diligent in writing. Of the common salvation. Now, what I would do, what is the common salvation? What does he mean by that? And I would look, investigate that further. Maybe look online uh, or if you have a different um, translation and see what does he mean? The common salvation. That's not something we use generally uh, in our conversation. So let's find out what that is. Okay, so um, he write unto you of the common salvation. Uh, it was needful for me to write unto you. So he said it was needful. That's in, that's uh, important. And it was needful to write and exhort. Exhort you about what? To earnestly contend for the faith. Okay, 
And we can go to verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so again, that's, that's quite a bit to digest at one time, so we're going to break it down. For there were certain men crept in unawares. who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, we can go there, let me type on. Uh, ungodly men, what did they do? Turn the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and he was also denying our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, for there were certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. So, that again is not a phrase that we use in our everyday language. So, we would need to uh, investigate that and see what does he mean by that who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. So let's let's not forget that. Let's put that in somewhere. Uh, certain men crept in unawares. So let's follow our, follow our text. Who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Okay. Now, on, uh, and did some research with the study Bible or maybe a, 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 an easier translation. You could even uh, put here your translation, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Uh, I'm sure it's talking about the Old Testament law that stated that uh, false teachers and and witches and and anyone who was preaching contrary to the word of God would face destruction. And so you can come up with a clearer way to type that and put that in your notes there. Okay. If you were preparing for a sermon, you could do that. Okay. So I just wanted to show you the format and how to just go through and just read each verse and then just pick out uh, just pick out those things that stand out to you okay I mentioned something called a subject and complement the subject We'll, have, we'll say that the subject is what the verse is talking about and the complement is what we're going to say about the subject. So let's look at, so we have our subject is what the verse is talking about and the complement is what we're going to say about the subject. So let's look at, uh, let's look at verse six. Let's see if we can find the subject and the complement. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, 
He hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness until the day, I'm sorry, until the judgment of that great day. So the subject, what is he talking about here? He's talking about the angels. He's talking about the angels. So, well, and what the compliment is what we're going to say about the subject. So what are we going to say about the angels? What does the text say about the angels? They kept, kept not their first state. They left their own habitation. That can be combined into one. They look. They left their own habitation. He had reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for how long until the judgment of the great day Okay, so we've got our subject and we've got our complement. The subject are the angels and the complement is what? Our subdivisions. Hmm. Well, we're going, what did we say about the angels? We found out that the subject was the angels. And what did we say about the angels? Left their first estate. They left their own habitation. They are reserved in everlasting chains under darkness until the judgment of the great day. Okay. And there are our uh, main, our subdivisions. So that was just a different way to come up with your main divisions and your subdivisions. Subject and a complement. Normally, each verse has a subject and a complement. Each verse has a main idea, and then you're going to take that main idea and just say, what are we going to say about it? What is the verse saying about that main idea? And that's going to be your subdivisions okay so that's just a different way to try to determine um, your main divisions and your subdivisions but if that causes confusion then just erase that okay all right so again you're just going to go through like we did together we're just going to go through and uh, read through the verse and write down those things that stand out to you in those verses, okay? All right, so it is now 12.31 a.m. and I am feeling it, so I'm gonna get off before I start rambling. Again, if you need any more assistance, if you need any further help, feel free to give me a call, text me, or email me, okay? I'll be more than happy to help you. Okay, take care.